morning boys and girls and welcome to your online class of biology students this is your third class in the second class we had discussed about the male reproductive system in human and thus today's topic is female reproductive system in human the female reproductive system in human mainly comprises of a pair of ovaries accessory ducts and external genitalia in today's class we are going to study about all these parts of the reproductive system in female in details so the first part is ovary ovary is located on side of lower abdomen of 2 to 4 cm in length as i said above that a pair of ovaries are found in female system so one ovary is present on one side of the lower abdomen and the other ovary is present on the other side so both the ovaries are found on both sides of the lower abdomen each ovary is of 2 to 4 cm in length and connected to the pelvic wall and uterus by ligaments the main function of the ovaries is to produce the female gamete we have already studied about this female gamete in our first class and we know that the female gamete is ova so ova is produced in this ovaries and along with that several steroid hormones are also present and produced in this ovary which actually regulate the process of production of this female ova next we have the accessory ducts the first accessory duct is the ovary duct students you have already studied about this ovary duct in your earlier classes but you are familiar with its common name which is fallopian tube so fallopian tube is also known as the ovary duct the fallopian tube is usually of about 10 to 12 cm long and extends from periphery of each ovary to the uterus usually a pair of fallopian tube is found in the female reproductive system and these two fallopian tubes combine and join at a common place which is known as the fundus now the fallopian tube comprises of the following parts the first one is the infundibulum the infundibulum is the closest part to the ovary it is found just beside the ovary and is usually of funnel shape the infundibulum comprises of small finger like projections which are known as fimbriae these fimbriae actually help to pass the ova after ovulation and pass it to the ovary duct next we have ampulla the infundibulum leads to a comparatively wider region which is known as ampulla and these ampulla later open up in the last part of the ovary duct which is known as isthmus this isthmus has a narrow lumen and this is the region which joins with the fundus of the uterus a point should be noted over here that the process of fertilization in human female reproductive system actually occurs in the ampullary isthmic region that is when the ova is present in this ampullary isthmic region at that time the fertilization process is successful if the ova crosses this ampullary isthmic region the fertilization process is not successful next we have is uterus uterus is also known as the womb womb here actually refers to the place where the embryo or the zygote develops after the process of fertilization till the parturition process parturition refers to the delivery of the embryo the shape of the uterus is of an inverted pear and it comprises of three layers of tissue the outermost is a thin membranous layer which is known as perimetrium 
Next to perimetrium is a middle thick layer of muscles which is known as myometrium. You should know that this myometrium actually helps in the contraction of the uterine wall, uterine wall to push the embryo out of the female reproductive tract during the delivery process. And finally, there is an inner glandular layer which is known as endometrium. This inner glandular layer actually prepares a cushion-like bed for the implantation of the zygote after fertilization. If the fertilization does not occur, that is the formation of the zygote is not done, then this endometrium layer, it starts tearing up and comes out in the form of blood which is known as menstruation. Finally, we have the cervix and vagina. These two are the last accessory ducts. The uterus opens into the vagina through a narrow cervix. The cavity of the cervix is known as the cervical canal and this cervical canal along with the vagina forms the birth canal. The opening of the vagina is usually covered by, partially covered by a membrane, very thin membrane which is known as hymen which can be absent in many female. Last we have the external genitalia. But before getting into the detailed discussion of the genital ex external genitalia, we need to go through the female reproductive tract again. So, this is the female reproductive tract students. As you can see here that these are the ovaries. So this is the lower, this entire female reproductive tract is present in the lower abdomen and this is the side of the lower abdomen where the ovaries are found. Just beside the ovary you can see the fallopian tube or the oviduct is present. The ovaries are the region where the ova is formed or produced. When the ova is released, the process of releasing of ova is known as ovulation. So when ovulation occurs, that ova is collected by this region of the fallopian duct which is known as infundibulum. So infundibulum is actually this funnel shaped structure which is present just beside the ovaries and helps in the collection of ova. The collection of ova is in particularly done by this finger-like projections which is found in the infundibulum region and which are known as fimbriae. So the fimbriae, they collect the ovum from the ovaries during the ovulation process and pass it to the fallopian tube. After infundibulum, there is the ampulla and next there is the isthmus. And students, this is this ampullary isthmus isthmic region. So when the ova is present in this ampullary isthmic region, if the fertilization occurs at this time, then the formation of zygote is successful. If the ova by chance crosses this region, the fertilization process is not successful. The two isthmus, they combine in this uterine fundus. This is the common place. This is the uterus it has the shape of an inverted pear and this thick region is the tissue layer of the uterus which comprises of the perimetrium myometrium and the endometrium next we have is this narrow cervix which has the cervical canal and this cervical canal opens into the vagina so this is the entire part of the female reproductive system now next students, we have the external genitalia. External genitalia actually refers to the part of the reproductive system which is visible from the outside. So from the outside in females, the external genitalia mainly has these three parts. The first one is the mons pubis. Mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair. So this is a very fatty region, it's a region which contains of fat tissues which is covered by a skin fold and pubic hair. 
After the mons pubis, there is a fleshy fold of tissue which is known as the labia majora which extends down from the mons pubis and surrounds the entire vaginal region. Just below the labia majora, there is again a second pair of fold of tissues which is known as the labia minora. Just above the labia minora, there is a finger-like projection found which is known as the clitoris. So this is all about the external geni genitalia in the females. And with this, we finally complete the entire female reproductive system. That's all for today. In the next class, we shall study about the gametogenesis process. Thank you students.